all my name is Fuha in this video I'm going to explain the concept of gauge R&R in a very simple way and also talk about how to properly set up the gauge R&R study so gauge R&R is a statistical tool and for some reason everybody thinks it is a very complex and complicated tool but it is not so firstly gauge R&R stands for gauge repeatability and reproducibility it is a specific type of MSA which is uh, measurement system analysis. So we want to conduct the gauge R&R study when we want to identify the variation in the measurement technique and to see if the measurement system is adequate. So what that means is we use measurement equipment such as CMM, custom functional gauges, uh, functional testers, go no go gauge, uh, calipers, micrometers, etc. to measure the dimensions and functional specifications. And we rely on these testers to catch any parts that do not meet the test or the dimensional requirements. But what if the measurement equipment we are using to pass the parts to customers is not adequate? What if the measurement equipment is not providing us the correct results? And what if we pass the non-conforming parts to our customers? Okay, we don't want to get into those details, but so, so that's what it is. We use the gauge R&R to evaluate the measurement system. So we use this to identify any issues with the measurement equipment because we want to have that confidence and trust in the, in the measurement data. So this study will not only show us that the measurement equipment is not adequate, but it will also show us which part of the measurement system is contributing to the most of the variation and with that information it will help us improve the system so let's talk about the the concept itself right so you have an operator who is trained to the to the work instructions and to the test procedure you have a calibrated test equipment and then you have some parts to test and that's it so when you conduct the study the measurement system variation can come from any of these three sources right from the product itself happened within the product. The next one is the operator variation, which means the operator was not trained or was not following the, the right procedure. So that could be the operator variation. And then we can have uh, the variation within the equipment or the tester. So such as um, the tester was not programmed properly, there's a fixture issue, maybe the tester is damaged. With this um, study, we get to know the contribution of uh, each of these areas. So rule is, if the measurement system is adequate, we should see that the most of the variation is within the product, okay? Because we always expect the product variation because there's always part to part variation. Um, but if the bulk of the variation is created by the appraisers or operators, then the system may not be suitable. So how to conduct the study? You need to have the measurement equipment which is the tester, go, no go gauges, CMM, calipers, micrometers, anything, but make sure that the equipment is calibrated. Then you need to have, uh, uh, then you need to have three operators, but make sure that they're all trained to the test procedure. Uh, then parts, um, 10 parts typically, and but this is the most critical step. We need to make sure that we take the parts within the entire range of the test specification. Um, so do not select the parts from the, from the same lot, as in do not select um, the production samples that are similar. So parts must lie within the entire range of specification. Otherwise it's worthless and waste of time. And also if possible, try to get the samples that have been sitting for a few days or a few weeks um, because we are evaluating the measurement system. We're not evaluating the product. Also, if you have any kind of golden standards uh, like gauge blocks or any validation parts, uh, use them because the 10 parts need to have uh, the actual test result. So they have to be tested by a different equipment. So we have three trained operators, one calibrated measurement equipment and 10 parts that range throughout the spectrum of the specification. So label the parts for identification. Three operators will run the 10 parts three times on the measurement equipment. 
You can use 5 parts instead of 10 parts, 2 operators, 2 times, but I typically use 10 parts, 3 operators and 3 times because more data is good. 3 operators, 10 parts and 3 trials, we will have 90 data points. So crunch the numbers to get the results. You should get the worksheet to give the operators to guide them on the run order of the random parts. You can print it from Minitab. Calculations are then made to determine the level of variation between the appraisers and parts across the trials. So obviously you need not hand calculate. Now we have so many softwares to do that. Um, I personally use Minitab to crunch my gauge R&R data. So in my next video, I will show you how to get the gauge R&R results and and also how to interpret the results using Minitab.